You have argued that secularism, or the divide between faith and secularism, mm. is actually a Christian concept. Sure. Whereas most people would think now, secularism is an ideal in itself and it's anti-Christian and it's a good thing mm -hmm. to use to argue that Christianity should be kept out of the public square. What do you mean by saying <laughs> it's actually a Christian concept in the first place? It's another one of those things that you recognise that Christianity is the air that we breathe because we think it's natural to divide the world into the religious and the secular. That's not the way. That's not the way ancient peoples thought. It's not the way that modern non-Christian peoples think. Um, you know, think of, the, think of the British Raj in India coming across the, the citizens of Hindustan and saying, oh, they've got a religion. And your average Indian at that stage says, what's a religion? Right? Well, you've got holy men and holy books and, and rituals. And they're like, yeah, but that's just woven into the warp and woof of life. Where do we get the idea that there's this, there's this one sphere that's called the sacred and there's this other sphere called the secular? Um, and really, it's a theological concept. You could trace it back to, for instance, Jesus picking up a coin and saying, you know, whose, whose head is on the coin? Caesar's. Okay, well, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's. And there's this sort of separation of the civil realm and the, and the sacred realm. You come through into Augustine, he talks about the city of God and the city of man. You come through medieval theologians and they start developing this very um, intricate system in which, yes, there is the Pope and there's sort of church authority and there are kings. And you know, by the time you get to the 11th century, you've got Henry IV in 1077, you know, cast out, excommunicated by the Pope and he has to go and grovel to the Pope. and. You know, it's, it's this system in which the church and the state are quite distinct realms. And actually, it, it's medieval theology that gives us this sense that there is the secular, which is sort of the bounded uh, time frame of this generation, uh, the next hundred years, the, 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 the secular world, and there's the sacred, the things, the things of eternity. Now, fast forward, and we now, you know, we love the fact that there's a separation of church and state and all these sorts of things. But these, these ideas have real... Uh, there's a genealogy to these ideas. And when you step outside of the Christianized West, you come to a place like India now, and you know, Modi is saying, well, to be, to be an Indian is to be Hindu, right? Where do we get this idea of the secular? You know? and, and Indian politics is kind of this, this now, this sort of reaction against, you know, Gandhi kind of founded the nation as this secularized nation. Christianity has had a massive impact on India. Um, not simply through, and not even mainly through Christian evangelization, but actually through secularization. And now there's the overturning of those presuppositions, and now people are saying, well, to be Indian is to be Hindu, right? And with what logic are we going to answer that claim? Or, or you come to Turkey and then Erdogan, and, and you know, to be Turkish is to be Muslim, right? And with what logic are we going to answer that claim and say, oh, no, the, you know, you're a secular ruler and, and people can have their private religious beliefs. Where do we get those ideas from? They, they absolutely come from a, a very Christianized understanding of things. And even to talk about Christianity and religion and even to talk about secularism is to talk in a particularly Christian register. So you're painting a picture, essentially, if I can put it this way, that the two... Christianity recognises, if you like, the place of the secular, the place of the sacred. Uh, but it doesn't argue for a moment that they should not cross-fertilise. They should True. work cooperatively, yes. whereas today they're set up as opponents. Yes, yes. And the state plainly is seen as superior in the minds of many modern Westerners <laughs> yes, yes. to the church. Yes, the separation of church and state is <clears throat> not the separation of religion and politics. Because... Every politician has a theological view, actually, because they, they have a view It'd about... be a surprise to many of them. <laughs> it, it would. It would. And, and yet maybe they just need to read my book, John. <laughs> in, in terms of our concept of human rights, for instance, like where, where do we get this understanding that, that, we, you know, that our societies are a collective of individuals who, by their own individual consents, are equal individuals in the eye of the law. Like, like, where do we get this understanding? It's a secularized theological vision of male and female born in the image of God, right? From, from Genesis chapter one. And, and to, to even have these most basic ideas about freedom and equality and progress and compassion is to be immersed in profoundly theological concepts, even if we've anonymized the theology, even, even if it's invisible to us, we, we are, carrying on theological 
conversations. And I often say the culture wars of people are just hurling Bible verses at each other. We've just forgotten the references. Um, and we, that's why we really need to get back and that's become an educated. That's interesting thing to say. To be informed by the scriptures, yeah. Yeah. We don't know where a lot of our precepts, even detailed ideas come from. 